I'm going to begin with you, but I'm just wondering about um, when you first sort of came up with the idea or you first heard this story and wanted to turn it into a movie, was it always the idea to dramatise it or was it ever at one point at any stage going to be a straight-up documentary? What was the origin to this? Uh, I, I didn't know really what form it was going to take until... I, when, you know, when I found the story, I thought it was a, you know, an amazing uh, kind of high story the likes of which I'd never really come across before but it wasn't until I made contact with the real guys um, and you know I worked with uh, producer Poppy Dixon who I worked with on The Imposter and uh, she and I had made contact with with the real guys who at that point were in prison and we really just wanted to try and understand the why of you know why they did this thing that was so obviously going to unlikely to end well for them and given they had all of these privileges and opportunities and and it wasn't until they started explaining these different motivations that it felt like oh this is more than a heist movie this is really about something else this is about this this pressure to be to leave a mark on the world or to to be a somebody and so I felt like it needed to have both of those things. You know, without the voices of the real guys, it might end up being a much more disposable story, you know, and that the hope was, well, this is a new way of telling a true story that you've never seen before. So, so it kind of came out of the process of, of, of learning more about it and then communicating with the real guys. So as, as a filmmaker now, and I'm, I suppose this applies to both of you, but when, when you read stories now and you hear about kind of real life stories, do you kind of visualise them in cinematic terms without even realising now? Do you always, you hear of a good story, do you instantly think, oh, I could cast that person in this or I could shoot that in this way? I think that's, you know, I think, you know, whether you're reading a book or listening to someone tell a great story, you have a very, you know, most of us, I think, have a very visual, you know, you have a movie play out in, in, your, in your mind of, of what that must have looked and, and felt like. And, uh, you know, with this, there were elements where the, the, the real guys remembered the same thing differently. Mm. And, you know, I decided to dramatize both versions rather than just one of them. So, you know, you, you're kind of getting conflicting movie versions of each of these true events, even though one person remembers it happening in a completely different location from the other. And so how do you... How do you reconcile that? And I guess with this, we wanted to sort of, I guess, pull the curtain back on how movies get fictionalised and how that process works. Am I right in thinking, did you guys live with each other for a short while, like a week or so before the shoot? To yeah. Kind of, you know, how, how helpful was that? In, in sort of, because I mean, even though the guys in some regards aren't that close, they still have this kind of almost unspoken yeah, camaraderie between them. I mean, Warren and Spencer are very close, mm -hmm. you know, and they still are like very kind of close friends, you know. Um, but yeah, Bart made us all live together in this house, someone's house it was. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we owned it, that house then for a week basically. And we'd sit, we'd sit by the fire every night, we'd, you know, we'd watch cops on TV, we'd just joke about, we'd box, we'd, you know, we clicked. You know, we always let Blake over there, like we just let him over there because we didn't want to click with him. But <laughs> <laughs> no, he messed with me, didn't. But no, we, we clicked really easy, yeah. But I was also going to ask, I mean, because obviously I've been interviewed you for Dunkirk and they're obviously yeah. doing sacred deal now. This one, I was wondering if you, when that moment came in your career where you felt like I'm an actor now, because I always feel like when people are kind of rising through the industry, it's always a dream, it's something I want to be when I grow up. And I was yeah. wondering if you had that moment of clarity where you've just gone, this is actually my career now, I'm actually yeah. an actor. Yeah, it's, it's, it's madness, that, isn't it? It's, it's when people kind of stop you and ask you for a picture, you kind of, you know, you, you realise, oh, you know, this is what I do, and you know, and that's the your privacy gone then as well. <laughs> um, yeah, at that moment, I mean, because because I'm back in Ireland really, and kept quite grounded, it, I've not floated away with the stars yet, and I don't want to either. But, you know, I want to stay grounded and, and humble. I hope so. It must have been great because I mean I'm assuming you've got to a stage now where you can pick projects. I guess there is that early I'm stage. I'm still auditioning, like yeah. so. Please, like put me in your film. Like I need it. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm still fighting away to the last two or three roles, you know. Um, and and yeah, being picky as well is the reason I've I've not worked in a while is because I'm very you know 
careful and have a good team around me on what we want to do next. And, and I've got a, a reputation of good filmmakers, <laughs> so I've got to keep that up. Mm. And, and but I mean, because obviously this is it's, this does blend between obviously established between drama and documentary. But do you harbour ambitions to do a, a fully fledged drama one day, a completely fictional kind of story? Can you see yourself going down that route in the future? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I always come from the place of you know what is the best way to tell this particular story, and that could be in the form of a doc, or it could be in the form of a hybrid, or uh, I think the next thing. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do that is yeah that's that's a straight fiction there's no doc element in it at all so um, but again you know it's like it, it all comes down to the story more than the form of the story and can you speak about the next one yet or is it still quite early stages? Uh, it is early stages but it's um, something that is it's an adaptation of a book and it's uh, it's a sort of dark comically kind of it's set in the set in America, set in the deep south and it's um it's also got a kind of heistish element but it's also got a very Trumpian overtone. It's about a charlatan who people would rather believe is this sort of um would rather see in an incredibly positive way than the reality of who this person is, which is someone who is uh, flawed and untrustworthy. So there's the kind of champion piece of it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!